Hi, my name is Shak and I'm an Amazon seller. I quit my day job only recently, although I started selling two years ago because I had some bumps in my road and that's what I'm going to share with you today. The problems I faced during building my business and how I overcame them. The reason I'm sharing this kind of information, this kind of horror Amazon stories, well, there's some reason. One is that I want you to know that you're not alone if that happens to you or if it's happening to you right now. There are a lot of sellers that facing these kind of problems and I think it's important to talk about it and to uh, show people how we can handle these kind of things because Amazon is more than just success stories. It's not as sexy as success stories, but we can gain a lot of value from it as well. Another reason is that I use tools that help me and if I didn't use these tools, maybe I would be in a different place in life. And I think it's important that more sellers will know about this possibility, so I'm going to share that. And the last reason is that although I feel like a unique person, a special snowflake, my problems are not unique. And I know that a lot of people are facing these problems also so I want to show you what I did exactly and maybe it will be helpful I hope you won't need it but who knows okay so let's jump to the juicier and darker side of Amazon okay problem number one happened two weeks after I ordered inventory for my second product I sold on Amazon. It was after I paid $8,000 for inventory. It was a high ticket product, so the inventory cost a lot. And my supplier, my sweet, sweet supplier stopped answering me. <laughs> At first, I wasn't bothered. I thought maybe uh, they have kind of a holiday that I'm not aware of. But after a week, I started to suspect maybe there is more into it. And I was right. When my supplier finally answered me, she told me that she's sorry she didn't contact me for uh, such a long time. But the factory was on fire. <laughs> No one was killed, no one was harmed, everything was okay, just the property was totally burned out. So all my inventory now is burned to the ground. She sent me pictures of the factory that shows that everything is definitely on fire. So I was super shocked, but then after I let it sink for a while, I remember that I had a bad feeling with the supplier and she didn't seem to me like trustworthy so I took the pictures that she sent me uh, of the fire and I searched them using Google Photos and I saw that these are pictures from a fire that happened one year ago. Shocking! Not nice uh, Mrs. Supplier! So now I started to get really suspicious and to freak out a bit because I already paid her $8,000 so I shamelessly asked her how this fire is going to affect my inventory and if she's going to fulfill my inventory although there was a fire and she said yes I am but we had two factories one factory stored the model you asked for the new model and the other factory that wasn't burned had the oldest model that you did not ask for so i can give you the oldest model of the product so the product was like a kind of hydrophonic planter and the old model was completely useful uh, amazon was full of this old model that did not work well i had nothing to do with 8000 worth of inventory of a model that has bad reviews and she was the only supplier that uh, agreed to give me the new model the other suppliers only have the old model that was suspicious so suddenly I thought maybe she never wanted to give me the newest model. Luckily, 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 and it's not luck. You know what? It's not luck. It's a golden tip from me to you. The only way I'm working with new suppliers is through Alibaba Trade Assurance. So that means basically that I pay money to Alibaba's when I order inventory. And once I get the inventory and everything is good and inspected and as we agreed on, Alibaba pays to the suppliers. And if this supplier won't fulfill the new model that I paid for, she won't get my money. So I told her I'm going to open a dispute and I'm not accepting the old model. She told me to wait one day before I'm doing it so I waited and that's when something amazing magical miracle happened my supplier said that they found <laughs> that that's funny just to say it. they found a hidden corner in the factory that wasn't burnt at all they found there the exact number of units I ordered in a new condition 
without any harm from the fire. So although there were moments when my breath kept away, eventually it ended well, I got the inventory and I blocked and deleted the supplier. My inputs from this story was one, take everything in a grain of salt. Business is not a place to be naive. And once I understood the situation better, I knew how to handle it much better. Also, in my opinion, every uh, communication with new suppliers must be through Alibaba's platform and must be paid through Alibaba's trade assurance. Input number three is to trust your gut feeling. In the first months of this business, I did not trust my gut feeling. I thought that I need to be like analytical and business and blah, 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 blah. But eventually there were a lot of cases where my gut feeling and my intuition were much stronger than anything else. So I think that there is a place to trust ourselves. And of course, a useful input in my opinion is don't pay 100% of inventory worth from the beginning. So there are factories who are doing like customized things and printing and they ask for 100% of the total worth of inventory right from the beginning before they start to manufacture. That's okay. But for other products, there is no reason to pay more than a 20, 30, 40% at start and the rest to pay once you expected it or once uh, you got video and photos that everything is okay because it just like motivates them to do it right. So one month after this whole fire saga ended and my $8,000 worth of inventory was in its way from China to the US, it was Amazon turn to fuck up with my business. Back in that time, I had a mentor or as I like to call him problem number three. So one morning, this mentor sent me an article that says that non-US sellers are forbidden from selling seeds in the US. Why was that a problem? Well, first, I'm a foreign seller. And second, my product contains seed. Not only that it contains seed, my whole differentiation was based on seed. I had seeds in the packaging, I had seeds in the manual, and I had stickers with seeds names. So my whole planter was based on having seeds. When these kind of things happen, I like to take like a day off, maybe two days off, maybe one week, and just to moan before I'm trying to figure things out. So I took a wonderful day of crying, wanting to quit this roller coaster business, wanting to leave everything behind and to run away to Thailand. But there was a pandemic going on. In Israel, we were in quarantine. I had no money left for a flight ticket and I will never leave Udi my love. So I just had to deal with it. The day after, I already came up with some solutions. First, I could open an LLC company in the US, transfer my Amazon account to the LLC, and then technically I will be a US seller. But then I also read that it's like a law in the US that non-US person cannot sell seeds. It's not just Amazon terms. So I was like, no, I, I don't want to fuck up with US law. So the next solution was to sell my inventory for a US seller. But that was also not legal because I'm not a US person, so I can't sell seeds, so I can't sell my inventory to a US person and also I tried to sell it anyway to a couple of people and no one wanted to buy it. So I finally dealt with it this way. I sent the inventory to a third party warehouse where they extract the seeds and then I sent it back to Amazon and I sold it like in two weeks. Everything was sold out in a break-even price. I did it in a break-even price because at that point I was so afraid that I'm going to get stuck with this inventory and I just needed money back. So I was like, just buy it so I can move to the next product. This clearly is not the one that will buy me a penthouse. So that's what I did. And when doing all these things, I also dealt with my third problem, which is the mentor I took. So until now, I had like a local mentor from Israel. You don't know him probably, lucky bastards. When I had problems with this planter and the seeds, he did not help me at all. He kind of disappeared and answered in short sentences and was like, yeah, Amazon is a roller coaster. No, no, no. That's the way in business. Go uh, big or go home. Unhelpful things that could not benefit my business in any way. And I had to deal with everything by myself, although I paid him lots of money every single month. So the red flags started to pop. I won't tell much about it now because I made a full video about it. Uh, I will link that down below. And after weeks that I asked for a launching strategy, a PPC strategy, I did not know a lot in that time. That was the reason I paid for someone who will help me. He said he will help me. He said that once the 
inventory will be in Amazon. Uh, he will help me with everything, but he didn't. He kind of disappeared and the answers he did give me were not professional at all. So my mentor is blowing me off, not giving me uh, answers to my questions. I have zero clue about PPC and launching strategy and life. <laughs> and meaning so i had to learn everything by myself from scratch in hebrew there is saying that goes like imen anili mili in english it means if i am not for myself then who is so we are the captain of our ship we sail through blue oceans red oceans there are sharks in the water i'm starting to love this metaphor sometimes amazon sent high waves or hurricanes eventually someday we will get to the promised land no that's too jewish eventually someday we will get to our private island that we totally can't afford and that's it like this video if you want to see more content like this and subscribe